Hi, I'm Dr. Charlotte Durr. I'm the ultrasound director for the University of South Florida's Emergency Medicine Residency Program. And I'd like to speak with you today on how I've incorporated ultrasound-guided regional anesthesia into my work in the emergency department and how I feel my patients have benefited from its use. So why learn ultrasound-guided regional anesthesia? Well, recently, the American College of Emergency Physicians released a statement advocating for the use of regional anesthesia in the emergency department, specifically as it relates as a great alternative to the use of opioids. You know that opioids are associated with hypotension, drowsiness, nausea, and of course, addiction. And poorly controlled pain is a major cause of unplanned admissions from the emergency department to the inpatient hospital setting. Unfortunately, inadequate analgesia appears to also be a risk factor for delirium in frail older adults. We know from the anesthesia literature that higher success rates are seen with ultrasound-guided regional anesthesia procedures as compared to nerve stimulators alone. And finally, we expect that using ultrasound-guided regional anesthesia as a way to control pain in the emergency department would naturally lead to improved patient satisfaction scores. But what about patient safety? Ultrasound guidance can improve patient safety in several ways, especially as it relates to the monitoring of local anesthetic systemic toxicity. We've had studies that compare the use of ultrasound guidance to regular nerve stimulators when it comes to delivery of local anesthetics, and they found that ultrasound reduces the risk of local anesthetic systemic toxicity by 65%, with the overall incident of major events reported to be 2.6 out of 10,000. Some procedures, such as ultrasound-guided regional anesthesia of the interscaling region, is associated with hemidiaphragmatic paresis. Typically, larger volumes are required when you're using the standard technique using a nerve stimulator. However, with ultrasound guidance where you can directly visualize the nerve and therefore deliver precise aliquots of anesthetic to that area, you can actually use lower volumes and as a result, lower the incidence and severity of hemidiaphragmatic paresis. We might also be able to conclude with using ultrasound guidance and therefore following our needle tip, we're more likely to be able to avoid the lung when we're performing procedures such as interscaling blocks, supraclavicular blocks, and infraclavicular blocks. By guiding our needle directly to the spot we're going to inject the anesthetic, we can avoid the lung altogether and decrease the incidence of pneumothorax. Although at this point, no adequately powered studies are there to compare the risk of pneumothorax However, the incidence with ultrasound at this point has been reported to be approximately 1 in 2,839 patients. There are a variety of different upper and lower extremity, as well as truncal blocks that can be performed with ultrasound guidance. A few of the indications would be for injuries to the shoulder, humerus, elbow, or even the forearm and hand region. As a matter of fact, you actually have multiple blocks that you can choose from. When it comes to the shoulder, we really focus on the interscaling block because that's the one that provides full coverage to the shoulder joint. But for other areas, such as the humerus or elbow, you have several to choose from, such as the interscaling, supraclavicular, infraclavicular, or even down at the elbow, the axillary block. For the forearm and hand, you can choose supraclavicular, infraclavicular, axillary, or even individually block the forearm nerves, the radial, ulnar, and median nerves. When it comes to the lower extremity, blocking the hip may be a little bit more difficult, but the fascia iliaca, or three-in-one block, can accomplish this and be used for hip reduction. In patients who have injury to the femur, for example, a femur fracture, you can provide your patient significant relief in the emergency department by delivering a femoral block. The femoral block will also cover the knee region as well, or you can block the saphenous nerve by itself and achieve the same effect. Down at the level of the ankle and the foot, you can use a pop sciatic block or block nerves individually at the ankle just as saphenous, posterior tibial, superficial deep peroneal, and sural nerves. So we've really found in our own practice in the emergency department that the delivery of regional anesthesia using this ultrasound guided technique has been great for overall patient satisfaction scores. It improves overall patient safety as it comes to avoiding intravascular injection, inadvertent nerve injury, in our blocks up around the, the neck and thorax region, it decreases the chance of developing a pneumothorax. So I really feel overall from a patient satisfaction and safety standpoint that having this essential skill has really been an important part of my practice and it's worked really well for overall pain control in our patient population. And I hope that you will also be able to incorporate it in your practice soon.